Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about a few very simple lighting techniques to create some nice effects in your renders. And I also want to talk about a serious bug in the rendering in the preview engine for Poser and to ask if any of you know uh, how to fix it. So what we have here is a scene. As I move my cursor over the various bits and pieces, you can see them highlighting to tell you that there's objects in there, but everything looks really dark. But if I do render here, you'll very quickly see that in actual fact, the amount of light in the scene is plenty high enough to be showing up in the preview. But for some reason, the preview is not showing a remotely accurate amount of light for this scene. There's one little uh, tip that I can give you here. Um, if you do get this bug, and I've had this turn up on lots of interior scenes when I'm trying to use external infinite lighting, uh, one solution is to create another light in the scene inside the darkened area. So I've got a light here called temp, which I just turn on. At the moment, obviously, I can't. At the moment, I can't see to navigate and arrange stuff, so I just create a point light inside here, and then I can turn that light off for rendering and on while I set my scene up. So uh, just a little, a little way to get around this uh, while you set your scenes up. So before I go any further, what we have here is... Um, a scene with a infinite light outside, an ambient light over here with uh, an actual light around it. So the ambient light is making the shade kind of bright and reflect off of here, but I've also got a, an actual light. So it'll be easier if I just show you in the actual scene. So I've just uh, gone to my main camera and you can see here, what we have here is a house. Um, I, it's kind of useful house because all of the walls and stuff and the windows are you can make them invisible but the trouble is what it gives you is this situation if i look at here so the house is a series of props and look there's millions of props here and that makes it unwieldy but uh, there isn't really an easy solution if you want to have the the uh, customizability to be able to switch every single uh, every single component on and off so anyway what we have here is a house with uh, a dummy floor and some dummy plants out here so that when you see through the window here they pick up these plants i have a pterodome background sky dome here but if i turn this sky dome off it makes no difference to the interior so so you can see it there's plenty of light here and what i have is a an infinite light shining down from this direction you can tell by how brightly lit that window is the infinite light here i'll just show you that has these parameters here nothing special and an intensity of 200 so uh, you know brighter than usual i also have a little spot here shining on the plants just so that they kind of show up from the inside and then i have that little uh, light on the inside which i showed you before but you can see already that the light is not bouncing around inside that scene which implies to me that poser is not handling bounce lighting properly if i take the the ceiling off here see if i can select the ceiling here if i take the ceiling off here or hide it at least you can see that light does actually shine down into the scene but even here there's no there's no bouncing happening so i don't know if this is a problem with the poser 12 or if it's some if it's some other issue um so far as I'm aware, the preview lighting is controlled by preview settings here. And you can see I've got um, hardware ambient occlusion, hardware shadows, hardware shading, all of this good stuff on. It's using my hardware, OpenGL. Um, so, so far as I can see, there's nothing here that's creating that weird over darkening here. There's, there's no, um, there's, it's just not shining through the window look if i come around here you can see the windows are transparent i actually change them to a cycles window or a superfly window this one's whatever it was before a firefly window um 
but it's just not lighting anyway to talk about the techniques that I've done to create that lighting what what I wanted to do I'll just show you that render again we've got this beautiful soft lighting coming through the window here which is creating these shadows now there is another way that you can create shadows but not realistic scene shadows so these shadows here if I return oops Daisy if I return to my scene are actual shadows of this window frame which just adds a lot of interest to your scene so you will see here that this is a realistic impression of the window frames and why that's useful is if you start to uh, for start you can cast it over people to create moodiness you know like that kind of um that noir lighting that you sometimes get in detective type movies you know uh, detective type scenes where it's um it's rainy out and you know it, it's uh, the the light the outside lights are shining through the windows and creating that that really moodiness to to create a dark atmosphere so for start i can i can change the outside lighting angle the infinite light so that these shadows here fall on the face or fall off the face and create interest there now you could create a similarish effect by going into materials and going to your lights and with a spotlight doesn't really work with infinite light because it's it, the um the scale is all wrong but say with a spotlight and then you can add a bitmap let's see if i've got one that i've already no okay so i could add a bitmap here and then that bitmap then i plug that into the color here and then that that will then cast colors colors on the scene you know uh, light and dark on the scene but also look at this lovely soft lighting this lovely it's a bit like a rim light but just using the natural light from outside so that's created by an infinite light outside let me just show you that one more time so here uh unfortunately you can't define infinite light so that they have uh so that they have a, a visible preview for example look here i've got a spotlight down here and if i select that spotlight and then do display object style and then do flat shaded that spotlight now becomes visible but if i do that with the infinite light i, I never get anything visible so if i go here infinite light display object style flat shaded it's already flat shaded but you can't see anything the infinite light is shining from over there somewhere so let me just make sure it's selected yep selected here infinite t -t -t -t. but you you can't actually see it or you can only infer it by the brightness of this outer wall um now you might be wondering if this sky dome terra dome is what's actually creating that weird lighting effect because it's intercepting the infinite light let's go back and choose that infinite light again so the infinite light is coming from down here you can just about see it kind of uh, hinted at now on the side kind of over here okay it's disappeared now um infinite see you've just got some very faint indicator beams coming down here but you can't see the actual preview but even with that pterodome missing which was only there just to create clouds and, and initially i was going to have the camera position so you could see out here and in which case that pterodome object here if you look through this window you'll see that the pterodome object which um is a sky dome see how i can see that kind of really gray sky dome object through the window and i was i was going to have a view to the window but i i decided not to go with that but even with the pterodome missing so if i make the sky dome invisible again now and then return to my internal camera a good idea by the way when you're making cameras to name your camera so i created a camera here uh, just to quickly show you i created object create camera revolving and then once you've created them give them names that are meaningful rather than having to keep messing about with your your main auxiliary and and posing cameras um and then you can save these cameras with a scene and you can see 
even with the sky dome hidden the, the interior scene is still dark now one more little um trick here just as i said to create interest for the scene you see this light over here we've got a very very gentle light in this corner um let me just choose this i don't think i named this light oh yeah i did lamp light there we go and if i go over to the parameters here you'll see it's only got a five percent intensity but the preview is not picking it up at all now it should be able to pick up a five percent intensity quite easily as a as a glow on this wall and if you look at this render you'll see there's quite a noticeable light glow in this area and that is not entirely due to the shade but what i've got here this is another little trick i've got this lampshade here um and it's called let me go into props down here somewhere it's called dining room lamp and if i now go into materials for dining room lamp what i have somewhere gradient i think it's called great i don't know whoever invented it whoever created this prop was very lazy this scene it's a, an old scene and um the part names are just absolutely useless i don't know why gradient for the lampshade but anyway the lampshade is called gradient so you always have a problem whenever you're working with a lamp i don't know if you can see here but there's a light bulb inside and then there's a lampshade on the outside and if you want the lampshade to glow as if there's really a light in it the best way is to turn it into an ambient light so here we have this kind of orangey color and then i've created an ambient value of two and what that does is it means that that lampshade kind of glows as if it has its own illumination now an alternative is to create a light or to take the light bulb on the inside and give that illumination then set the the lampshade to some shade of transparency but that never quite works because the colors the the colors once you start adding transparency you get washed out so it's easier just to take the lampshade and uh, create that lampshade with an ambient light here so what that then does is get that gives that nice glow which you can see instantly even in the preview here you can see that because it's ambient now and then when you render it that lampshade has some life to it and then i've got a fake uh, a fake light in there as well which you can now see previewed which is bigger than both the lampshades so it's um so it's kind of class casting that little glow here so there's just a couple of tips guys on uh how to how to give nice soft uh lighting in the scene the reason that i added this was because i'm looking for this kind of just about to start evening lighting or early morning but given there given the figures posto you'd say probably evening then i've got uh as as you saw a spotlight outside which is shining on these trees so you can see the trees and bushes and uh you don't have to have you don't have to have these in the you know in the scene it looks as if these are right up against a window because of the scale of them but they don't have to they don't have to be positioned exactly where, where they realistically would if i move this tree up close how it looks in the in the render here then the scale of it would be too big so don't so don't get too constrained by realism but just move your stuff around wherever it works for your scene and um there you go that's the the end scene if anybody's got any ideas at all about why the preview for this is uh is black let's go back to my interior light uh, interior camera sorry so i've got camera view here interior camera you can see that's black if you've got any idea about why this is black and there's no bounce light showing off i'd really appreciate it uh it's certainly not um it's not any of the main settings that i can see um there's nothing in preferences that i can see that would affect that i think that's just a, a, a yet another poser bug to be honest um but i think that you'll agree that the end results regardless of why it's doing it are quite pleasing and um hopefully that gives you some ideas about using infinite lighting through a window and uh, as as i said i've changed the default firefly glass here oh my goodness my words are getting mixed up i've changed the default firefly glass to um i don't know what even 
I don't even know what kind of glass that is actually. The fact that I can see it in the scene actually suggests that it's not superfly glass because that would show up as solid white. So in actual fact this is the cycled superfly glass. This is old old style glass. Just simple transparency I, I suspect. Let's have a little look in the material room. Uh, glass yeah just simple transparency I think I was trying to um I think I was trying to eliminate any problems that could be creating this darkness here but I never did uh, I never did manage it so uh, even removing the window here if I just go up here if I take this window just in case anyone is going to suggest that let me just uh, select dining window if I make that invisible and then go back to my other camera still dark inside even though on this view the lights actually shining in so if you have any ideas guys I'd appreciate them uh, if not hopefully the infinite light and the ambient light tips will do you some good and I will speak to you again sometime soon